let us look at the various aspects of faults. We will start with the definition of faults. Then we'll go to the SI unit of force. Then we will look at the vector nature of a force. We will also look at how we represent a force on a diagram. The next important thing is components of a force, where we will split a force into its components. And then finally, we look at resultant force. Now let's go straight to definition of a force. We will define a force as either a push or a pull. This is a very, very simple definition. A force defined as either a push or a pull. We can have an object and then we have a force either pulling it or pushing it. So this is how we are going to define a force as either a push or a pull. The unit of force is Newton. Suppose we have a force of 200 newtons. This is the correct way of writing it. 200 newtons. We can even write it this way. 200 newtons. Notice that when I write newtons in as a full word, I start that word with lowercase letter. This one here, lowercase. But when I write the word newtons as an abbreviation, then I use uppercase or capital letter. It would be wrong to write it this way. 200 Net newtons. This is wrong. Or this way. Again, this would be wrong. It's important to get these basics right because we want to start on the right footing in this particular subject. And it starts by knowing how to write the unit correctly. It may appear to be a very simple thing, but it is these simple things which make the foundation of the subject. So let's remember, when we write the unit in newtons, if we want to abbreviate it with the letter N, then it must be uppercase N. When we want to write it in full, then we start with the small letter N. The other thing that you want to look at is the vector nature of force. Force is one of the physical quantities which is described as a vector. What is a vector? What's a vector? A vector is a physical quantity which has magnitude as well as direction. It's a physical quantity which has both magnitude and direction. Any physical quantity which is fully described when its magnitude is stated as well as its direction is a vector. Force is an example of a vector. So it pays to remember that force is a vector. Now, how do we represent a vector 
on a sketch. In this subject, it is important to know how to draw sketches. And in a sketch, we will be expected to show forces. Now, how do we show a force on a sketch? Let's go to my whiteboard where we will look at how we do this. Suppose we have a force of 200 newtons. We will draw a line segment like that. And then to this line segment, we will put an arrow head. This is the arrow head and this is the line segment. This is basically what we refer to as an arrow. And then we'll say that this force, F, is equal to 200 newtons. Now, let us look at the various aspects of this representation. This arrowhead, this one here, it shows the direction of the vector. So it shows the direction. So this force of 200 newtons acts in this direction, which we can describe as to the right. Even if we don't write the word to the right, then the direction of the arrow itself signifies the direction of the force. Very important. A vector is represented with a line segment and an arrow head. The direction of the arrow shows the direction of the vector. In this case, the vector we are dealing with is force. So this is the direction of the force. The next thing we want to note is the length of this arrow. From this point all the way to that point. The length of the arrow represents the magnitude the magnitude of the force, the size of the force. It represents this number here, 200 newtons. The direction of the arrowhead shows the direction of the force, while the length of the arrow itself, or the length of the line segment, shows the magnitude or what we refer to as size of the force. Let's draw another force here. Maybe you can call this one F1. Let's draw another one here. Like that. And we call it F2. Now looking at the length of this arrow, it is shorter than this one. So this force may be, let's say, 180 newtons. The length of the arrow is directly proportional to the magnitude of the force. So the bigger the magnitude, the longer will be this arrow. Remember that the length of the arrow is directly proportional to the magnitude of the force. So this one is a smaller force. It is a force whose magnitude is much smaller compared to this one. And therefore, the length of that arrow must also be small. However, they are acting in the same direction to the right. To this extent, these two forces are not equal. These two forces, F1 and F2, they are not equal. Not equal. Let's look at another pair of forces. Consider a force drawn like this on a sketch diagram.
and another one on the same sketch drawn like this. We can obviously see that these two forces have got the same length but they are pointing in different directions. Let me call this force F3, maybe give it a magnitude of 100 newtons, and this F4, again give it a magnitude of 100 newtons. We can see again F3 and F4, although they have the same magnitude of 100 newtons each, and we know that by looking at the length of the arrows, they are the same, they are pointing in different directions. To this extent again, these two forces are not equal. This one and this one, they are not equal. Let's look at another pair and draw a force like that. Another one like this. And we say this force F5 could be 100 newtons. F6 could be 180 newtons. It's clear that their magnitudes are different. Even without writing these numbers here, magnitudes, look at their lengths. The length of this arrow here is shorter compared to this length. That shows that F6 has a bigger magnitude compared to F5. The other thing to note is that they are pointing in different directions. Again, these two forces are not equal. So let's look at the three situations when two forces are different from each other. They may point in the same direction, but have different magnitudes or point in different directions but they have the same magnitude or point in different directions and have got different magnitudes. All these are situations where we show two forces which are not equal or which are not the same. So we ask ourselves a very important question. When are two forces said to be equal? Two forces are said to be equal if and only if they have the same magnitude and they are pointing in the same direction. So if we can call this one F7 and F8, we see that F7 and F8, they point in the same direction and in addition, they have the same magnitude. This is the only time that two forces are said to be equal. Now let me clarify a point here. By saying that the two forces are pointing in different directions, they need not point right in opposite directions. They could be, it could be something like this. You may have one force pointing in this direction, like this, and another one pointing this way. These are two different directions, although they may have the same magnitude or different magnitude. I just wanted to emphasize the fact that it's not when they point in right in opposite directions. This one could also be different directions. As a matter of fact, when two forces are acting in the same direction, the angle between them is zero. This angle here could be, let's say, 30 degrees. So here, the angle between them is 0 degrees. Over here, the angle between them is also 0 degrees. 
Over here, the angle between them is 180 degrees. Again here, the angle between them is 180 degrees. We will see this in the next section where we will look at resolution of a force or when we are combining two forces to get a resultant. That is when we will learn that particular aspect more clearly. For now, let's recap the main point of this particular lesson. A force is either a push or a pull. The SI unit of force is newtons, and we represent newtons by either writing the symbol, which is capital N, or writing the word newtons in full, but making sure that we start with small letter. A force is a vector quantity. A vector is a physical quantity which has both magnitude and direction. And we represent a vector on a sketch diagram using a line segment with an arrowhead. The arrowhead shows the direction while the length of the line segment shows the magnitude. Two vectors are said to be equal if and only if the angle between them is zero and they have the same magnitude. When we say that the angle between them is zero, it means that they are acting in the same direction. So let us say that two forces are said to be equal if and only if they are acting in the same direction and they have the same magnitude. There are three situations that two forces can be different from each other. The first situation is when they act in the same direction, but they have different magnitudes. Or they act in opposite directions, but they have the same magnitude. Or they act in different directions, and they have different magnitudes. So let us stop this lesson at this point. And in the next lesson, we will talk about components of a force, where we will split a force into two parts, each referred to as a component.